Welcome to another episode of the Alamo City Sportscast with Mike Jimenez and Joe Garcia. Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Join the discussion as we broadcast live from beautiful West San Antonio. And remember to tip your hosts as it helps the show grow. What's up, San Antonio? What's going on, South Texas? This is the Alamo City Sportscast coming at you from the west side of San Antonio. My name is Mike Jimenez. That's Joe Garcia. Today, we're going to have Johnny Walker, Texas Longhorn legend, Holmes Husky legend, member of the Texas High School Football Hall of Fame, will be on to discuss this weekend's college football games, have some conversations with him about the Cowboys as well, the Texans. Big show today. I say a big show, but it's going to be compact, right? We normally go from 10 to 11.30, yeah. but we're going to go to about 11, 11.15 today. Let's cut it short. Cut it short about 15 minutes or so because daddy's got some work stuff to do today. Joe, how are you doing today, my yeah, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing really good now that the Saints suck again. Oh, yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get into the Saints suckage. Yeah, I, I, I saw the paper bags out there yesterday, and, and, and that is funny because back in the day, that is what the Saints were known for. They had the fans out there <laughs> calling themselves the Aints, so they'd have the paper bag and all that. Of course, they lay an egg yesterday, losing 33-10 to 10 to the Denver Broncos on what was basically the Drew Brees Appreciation Day. And it just goes to show that you only go as far as your quarterback in the NFL. And the Saints had a quarterback yesterday, Spencer Rattler. Spencer Rattler yesterday threw for 172 yards, no touchdowns. The dude fumbled the ball a lot. Yeah, he did. Broncos go on to win 33-10. to 10. Uh, It was a, an ugly game. Spencer Rattler lost the ball twice, put it on the turf, uh, was taken back for a thick six. Was it a thick six? What, what, do, you, what do you call it if it's, a, if it's a fumble return for a touchdown? Because, you know, the, the, the Broncos got on the board with two field goals. Javante Williams had a touchdown. Another field goal was 16-3 at halftime. But then again, you see in the fourth quarter, Cody Barton with a 52-yard return for a touchdown, a fumble return for a touchdown. Game was over. They pulled Spencer Rattler out. Uh, this was a game that was brutal to watch. No, it wasn't. It was. If you're a I, Cowboy I, fan, you enjoyed every minute. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, my team beat your team, and at the end of the day, neither of our no, teams. No, it doesn't are the matter. Playoffs. Your they, team still sucks. At the, at the end of the day, it sucks. At they the suck. end of the day, neither of our teams are making the playoffs. Cowboys they won't suck. make the playoffs. The Saints are not making the playoffs. We're all going to be looking for that top ten pick. At this point, we're team tank, right? I mean, I'm a, if I'm a true Saints fan, I'm cheering for them to lose the rest of the way. Daddy came home, and you know, he basically walked out the house with. Another man's girl. The hell are you talking That's about? What happened. Sean Payton. Your dad. Oh, Sean Payton. Yeah. Oh, dude, Sean Payton came home in the dome. Beat you all at home in the dome, man. That's like, hey, it's a game that you all yeah. lost. But at the end of the day, yeah. wide receiver it's, one it's, out. Wide receiver one out. Wide receiver two out. Center saying, out. Left tackle let's, out. Let me finish. Running saying, back you out. You all lost in your own home, right? Yes. But at the end of the day, the Saints could have lost. Beaten, the you Saints lost because. You had a good coach at that other end, man. The Saints and it's the could, coach that you all the wish Saints you couldn't. Have, the Saints couldn't have beaten the Longhorns yesterday. Oh, the Saints man. are decimated. Left tackle, center, right guard, Here running back violin. one, Here wide receiver one, wide receiver two, and quarterback playing. all out. Are you kidding me? All. Here comes the violin. Best linebacker also out. Dude, they, they like Chris Gonzalez. What did Chris Gonzalez say earlier? The Saints suck. They're the ain'ts again. <laughs> but they ain't overpaying a quarterback and a wide receiver, says yeah, our guy. You know what else they ain't doing? They ain't winning. And you know what? <laughs> do you know what? They beat your team, Joe. Whoa, Joe, you they know, ain't you know what? Let's just show highlights of week two. Let's show highlights of week Why two, shall we? Highlights for? That was your Super Bowl. Ever since then, hey, y'all shit the what, bed. What, what was the Can't even win a game. What was the Cowboys Super Bowl? Can't win a game. What was the Cowboys Super Bowl? They give it up 119 points at home. Look at this that, year. Fernandez. What? Spurs got worse record than boys. Yet they always get the boys in their mouth. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tex Mex Frank. Ain't los mini gritos. You know what? Are we going to pour one out for uh, the Saints? Yeah, we got to. We pour... the, Sa the Saints season is effectively over. Let let's just go ahead and team tank it the rest of the go. way. <laughs> let's show that man. No, it's just the audio. <laughs> that mini grito sponsored you by tex -Mex frank put a dollar 99 into the collection plate for that fantastic uh you know spurs wrapped up the regular season uh regular season the preseason yesterday uh basically they played nobody 
right? So it's kind of hard to gauge what happened last night because they basically played nobody. Uh, but Joe, give this team a letter grade for what they've done over the offseason, over the preseason and whatnot. What, what have you liked? Spurs lost 129 to 107 to Houston yesterday. Again, the Spurs didn't play Wemby. They didn't play. I mean, when your starting lineup is Trey Jones, Malachi Branham, Harrison Barnes, Julian Champagny, and Zach Collins, you know that you're not actually going to go out there to try to win the game, right? Yeah. The, Wemby didn't play. Chris Paul didn't play. Uh, Sohan didn't play. Keldon Johnson didn't play. So Castle got out there, got some runs, 16 points, uh, 6 of four, uh, 14 shooting. But this was a throwaway game. Now the Spurs got to do some stuff. They got to make some moves, got to drop some players. We talked about this with Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs and Ken's Five yesterday that not everybody's going to make the team, right? And we saw yesterday they didn't play Minix. Uh, they didn't play uh, H- Harrison Ingram. When you, see, when you see Coach Pop say that we don't know what to make of Harrison Ingram, that's not a good sign. I'm sorry. They don't know what to make out of you. They don't know how to use you. So that is not a good sign. Chris Gonzalez says offseason grade is a C-. minus. I'm going to say as a, as a um, team in the preseason play, I'm going to say it's a B minus, but I think it's a C minus what the Spurs did on the offseason by bringing in Chris Paul, bringing in Harrison Barnes. Well, you said they C-. were punting. It's a punt. You said they're punting right it's now. A develop- I think- it's a developmental year. <laughs> well, the thing is, right now with the moves and all that they did in the offseason, looking at the team as currently constructed, you know, given everything that I see, I'd probably have to say it's a solid C. We talked about this yesterday, and I I gave it some more thought as to whether or not the Spurs have any ability to leapfrog five teams. Who are they better than in the West? You know, right? That was the discussion. Portland, Portland was. I think we were better than Portland. Portland and Utah. And oddly enough, I think the Spurs could catch the Lakers. I think the Lakers are ripe for sucking. The the Lakers are. Let's say Anthony Davis goes down. Let's say LeBron James goes down with an injury. You know what? You know who might be a seller at the end of the year is Phoenix, right? If Phoenix is there, you know, three, four, five games under 500, they might sell off their pieces. Yeah. They might just call it a call it a loss. I wouldn't be mad at the Spurs picking up Book. Mm-hmm. Devin Booker. Devin Booker. Come over here. Oh, dude. He 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 likes that Hollywood treatment, man. Who's he dating oh, Kendall yeah, Jenner? No, man. He ain't gonna come to San Antonio. Yeah, bro. no, ain't nobody What's there coming to do over here. here? That's uh, what you were saying, right? That hey, was man, argument. you got the pearl. We got the pearl. <laughs> There's things to do here, man. It's just, but if you're like a young person you're and you want to do something. African-American The player. nightlife, you know, I get that. Here, you know, in San Antonio, it's kind of like family-oriented. It's, it's a family thing. Yeah, yeah, I tell that to my daughter all the time. You know, don't be here in your 20s. Come When you want to start a family, come to San Antonio. It's a great place to raise a family. Remember when we were in our 20s? That's when it was in its heyday. You had... Freaking nightclubs up and down the river walk downtown. They had a bunch of clubs all over the place. Bunch of clubs scattered all over San Antonio. Now it's all dried up, dude. It is, man. Uh, uh, San Antonio had a very good club scene. But the fact of the matter is, is that my daughter points out that the younger people don't want a club anymore. Nah, man. The only ones who want a club are the international types, man. The ones who want to listen to uh, reggaeton and stuff like that. They are the ones who club to, to this day. You go to Stone Oak. And you go to uh, some some nice clubs in that area, uh, but the nightlife doesn't exist in San Antonio. I mean, what is the nightlife? Well, we're gonna go be kind, rewind right next to the Alamo. Is that is that the nightlife? No, that that's the place that Hefe didn't like. He didn't like it. He we walked in. <laughs> Forty five seconds later, we turned around, man. And even even oh, trying to find the bathroom dude. was difficult because it's like you have to go downstairs. And he goes, man, we gotta go downstairs. No, oh, f this please. place, man. Let's get out of here. So what's funny is that right now I'm purging a lot of photos on my phone. Yeah. You know, just going through all my photos and it's just years worth, man. What's up with that too? Because on Facebook, I get a notification that says Michael Jimenez wants to add you as a friend. Yeah. So uh, I decided that I was going to create a new Facebook page because, okay. because the old one has all my stuff from my prior marriage, my marriage one and You're marriage doing a two. Cleanse. Doing a cleanse. Dude, it is so difficult to go through all of that. That it was just easier to just start all over again. So you deactivate Re- the account, reset, <laughs> and 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 two point comes out. So uh, those of you who want to look me up, just look me up for Michael Jimenez. I deactivated my old one. Going to put a new one up there, and uh, 
I got timed out as to the number of people that I could add as a friend yesterday. Usually, usually I was able to go like friend, add, 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 add. And then yesterday, after about 50 or 60, times you out. They time me out. Yeah, I think you're a spammer or something. That, that's exactly what the website says. So they say we'll be able to offer more uh, friends down the road or whatever the case may be. But if you want to send me a friend request, uh, just look me up under Michael Jimenez. You see my my mug on there. Uh, dude, it's been a long day at work today already, man. But but here's I the know, thing. Man. Here's the thing. Going through photos and clearing out your photos from your, your camera roll, dude, it is tedious, man. It is tedious. And I have gotten rid of probably about five or 6,000 photos, memes, GIFs, just things that just clogged up the phone that you just don't want there anymore. Yeah. Kind of crazy. Jay Shannon Speed reaches out to us on our YouTube stream. By the way, you can be part of the show by uh, leaving a comment on our YouTube stream. It says, I don't want to hear any excuses when Wemby sucks in the season opener. Had all of preseason to knock the, the dust off, the rust off, but the Spurs sat him instead. Pathetic. People reaching out saying that the Rockets were playing the starters yesterday, whereas Pop was like, nah, we're going to just, we like the team we got. We like the team we got. Joe, I'm worried, Joe. I'm so worried, man. This might be a 22 and 60 season all over again. Nah. If that, I mean, come on, Joe. They're going to be better than advertised. I'm hoping, I'm hoping they're good. It's, you know, this game that they played against the Rockets, the Rockets had some of their starters out there. And the Spurs really didn't have anybody. You right. know, they just kind of had like their second, third options. Let's see what this kid's got, you know, before we make the final cuts kind of thing, you know. Re basically, Pop put a team out there and he said, F it, I don't care. Yeah. He I don't care, care about this game. He doesn't care. He doesn't. That's no. exactly what uh, he said. Dude, Joe, I know people give me crap about it because Spurs fans are are homers and, and I, I want to see this team win. I would much rather this team go 500 this year in Wemby's second year than to go 22 and 60 again. But Joe, yeah. honestly, heart to heart, Joe, just look at me, Joe. Remember, we, we see what's going on with the Cowboys. We see what Jerry Jones is doing up there saying we were all in, but you know and I knew that the team was getting worse. Yeah, Is it wrong to have the opinion that the team punted this season? <laughs> you were the one that said it. You well, because let's, let's talk about that. And let's punting to me means you're going to win. 20 games. No, 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 no. It, the, You're not no, trying. No, no, no. no, no. Trying. That, that, that's not it. Punt to me is we are not fielding a playoff team. No, they're not. Look at this comment. It has me dying here, dude. Bear County Social Apparel. Come to San Antonio if you if like, like goodwill. goodwill. <laughs> Look at Tony Ornelas. <laughs> says, come to San Antonio. Great poor city to raise a family, Mike. It's <laughs> no, a great city to raise a family. Saying. It's also a poor city. You're saying basically that you're saying that the Spurs are punting because they're not trying to win. They're not trying to get better. No, I, maybe they were trying to get better. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that they didn't get better. The team is slightly better because you got Stefan Castle, right? And hopefully he turns into the truth. He looks pretty decent. He looks like an NBA-ready player. Chris Paul, more and more, is looking like he's a rental for four months. That The Spurs will get rid of him in February. And even if they don't get rid of him in February, he's going to only play 55 games because his body breaks down. Harrison Barnes looks like a shell of himself. It's just preseason. I know he has new teammates and whatnot, but I'm not seeing anything from Harrison Barnes unless we're all pinning our hopes that uh, Julian Champagny is suddenly going to be the truth in, in, in the regular season. Is that where we're going with this? Champagny, man. <laughs> These comments are funny. They're making fun of us for talking about clubs back in the day. Mario Cavazos, the squeeze in for vida. No, bro. Off of General McCull Mullen. Nice. <laughs> Joe, what was your favorite club back in the day? Oh, man. We went to like Planeta Mexico. We went to Joe's Volcano, Polyesters, down on the River Walk. Now, did you go to Joe's simply Rome. because it was close by? I mean, I went to Holmes High School. Joe's Volcano was off of Ingram close and by, But I mean, that was. I mean, why. That, that, Joe's sucked. It's all right. It was it. It was like where you would pregame, because the drinks were cheap, right? You go yeah. there pregame and then go somewhere better. But it sucked. Let's just be it, honest. It was with all right. You. Did you go? Did you go back in time and think about it? I think about all the times I I spent at nightclubs back in the day. I realized I never liked it. I mean, the whole idea was to go out to go meet a girl, right, and go get drunk. 
go get a Long Island iced tea or three, go get drunk. But I'm thinking about like the only club that I really liked was probably Park Place. <laughs> Park Place. And I met my first wife there. It was the only club that I liked. The atrium had the hottest chicks, but it was so crowded there. Planeta had the hottest international girls. The girls also from St. Mary's. Yeah. And they were smoking hot over there. But, dude, it was Sardine City, dude. You're just kind of walking around like this, waiting for 25 minutes to get a drink. What was that was one club that used to be? I think it was the atrium. It used to be right there in Fredericksburg, right? Oh, that was uh, the, Graham. No, no. The one on Fredericksburg, right where they used to have the leaky barrel. Now it's um, the Slackers. Yeah, Club Entro. Yeah, it used, that's what it used to be. Yeah, it had two levels. They know Udrick was yeah. always there. I don't know, man. It's it's funny how how the younger people are not into the club scene like like we were. I had fun some from time to time. Don't get me wrong. You know, you meet a girl, then it is fun. Uh, but on the days that you didn't, it was just sweaty times, dude. Is there's just sweating in your long sleeve shirt, sweating through your cologne? Wasn't a big fan. Wasn't a big fan. Oh, hello, fist saying Spurs all in. Uh oh. We have Roy in the house. That's a name I haven't seen. Roy, welcome to the Animal City Sportscast. Says Mike and Joe. I agree with Mike. I do think we need a fresh blood at head coach for the Spurs. Joe, this is going to be the season that the Spurs fans turn on pop. If, 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 the, <laughs> if the Spurs win just 30 <laughs> games, Joe, Vegas says 35. ESPN Analytics says 31. If the Spurs are 31 and 51, does Pop survive into the next season? Six seasons in a row of losing records. Will Pop survive that, Joe? Uh, Pop is going to survive it, dude. Spurs fans ain't going to turn on Coach Pop. Dude. dude, why not? They're not, man. Cowboy fans turn on Landry. They turn on Landry. They ain't going to turn on Coach Pop. I know you want to make Coach Pop the villain, dude, but he's not, man. It's not the villain. It's just, dude, have you ever thrown a house party before? That's supposed to end at one o'clock or two a.m. and then people are still, you know, mulling around around three or four. It's like go home. The party's over. It's like Ferris Bueller at the end of the movie. You guys are still here. Leave. The movie's over. Go home. Look at that's him. what Pop is like right now. He's just hanging around still. Look at Leha. He says people acting like we added a ten-year-old Paul. You know, from back in the day. Yeah. Spurs winning 32, 36 games is what he's saying. Chris Paul. I mean, think about it this way. How good was Duncan his final season? He was serviceable, right? <laughs> it was serviceable. How good was Parker his final season? All right, with, with, with Charlotte. Look at this comment here. Demon Mike went to Giorgio's. <laughs> Giorgio's. Uh, I accidentally dated a girl from Giorgio's. Oh, here we go. I told, that, tale tale time. I, I told that story. Tell tale, tale time. Yeah, she told me that she worked for her parents. Which was true during the day, but she didn't tell me at night that she uh, was a stripper at Georgia's. And that that was like right across the street from a church, right? Like like St. Luke's or whatever that yeah. was. It's like, how do you have a strip club across the street from a church? Don't know how that was possible. Not only that, it's a church, it's a school. Is that, is that why it's no longer there? Probably, man. They didn't like it there, so they found ways to shut it down. Look at this. Locked on Spurs. Jeff Garcia's in, in the house. I lived at Park Place. I was there every Friday through Saturday. Okay, so this is funny. Jeez, this is man. funny because if we could go back in time, if we can go back in time, how many times was I in the same room as Jeff Garcia from Walked On Spurs and Ken's Five? <laughs> probably didn't even know it. Didn't even know it, right? I, I probably even said hi to him. Like, hey, what's going on, man? You know, as he walked by or whatever. He may, we may have even had a drink. I don't know. But if you can go back in time, because he says he was there every Friday through Sunday. I was there every Saturday. What room was Jeff Garcia in back in the day? Because you walked in, you had the karaoke room, you had the country room, you had the disco room, you had the top 40 room. Yeah. I picked, dude, I pictured Jeff inside the uh, the disco room. The disco room, God, bro. Look at Tex Mex <laughs> Frank. Hands down, Cool Arrows was the best name for San Antonio. Yeah, Bar. over downtown. They had that murder over there back in the day. I wonder if there was a murder or some sort of shooting or stabbing yeah, there. Yeah, man, they shut it down. I, I, I worked at Ken's 5 back in 2014. So I was a, a news producer for and a, and a TV news reporter for many, many years, for 10 years. And then I took years off, and I went back for about a year and a half. And in 2014, there was a shooting there at Cool Arrows Lounge downtown. Yeah. 
and it's kind of by that three story or that two story H E B. It's kind of catty corner to it. Anyway, uh, I was there at the uh, at the station, and they kept saying the name of the bar as Cool Arrows, and I kept on raising my hand, going, "You might want to just say the bar. You might just want to say the establishment because you do realize." That you're cursing in Spanish, or you're saying something stupid, dumb in Spanish, rather. Kabooms. <laughs> dude, kabooms <laughs> off of Highway 90. Damn Highway 90. It. Dude, that was, a, that was a nightclub that had a basketball court on the outside. <laughs> yeah, it's like you could go hoop it up, sweat it up, and then sweat it up on Damn, the dance floor. Dude. You remember, remember this one, Noche Caliente, dude. You weren't a real one unless you remember Noche Caliente. Dude, I don't remember Noche Caliente. Which, where, where was that at? You know, you know. That's all I'm gonna say. What was the one over on on Culebra and Grissom? There was like a country bar there back in the day. It was a country club, nightclub. God, what was that one? It was like it's like where Culebra turned into Grissom, Tezel, all that area right there. That place was happening, man. Midnight Ropaho was also pretty nice back in the day. Learn how to two step. <laughs> Everybody's here saying that guy Roy's your burner. <laughs> that was funny. Y'all remember when Mike showed up to Joe's party two hours after it ended? Creeper. I was in the backyard looking like that Travolta gif where I'm just looking around. Like, where is everybody? But he's gone, where bro. Where everybody go? MJ needs new material. His pop hate. Pop, pop bashing as old as the coach. You know what? I mean, it, the, then Pop needs to give me new, new material, right? Pop can't go out there and throw out a 25-win season. Give me some new material. I'm going to tell you, like they said, don't put that evil on me. You know? Don't put that evil on me. Co uh, coach Pop, I don't believe, is a problem. It's just going to be the team itself. I mean, you look at the talent that they've surrounded Wemby with, while some of it, is I do you believe that Pop has not... no saying in in who they draft or who no, they get? In, it's in a front agency. office, dude. I'm dude, sure they come up to him. He is the front office. I'm sure it... they come up to him and they ask his input. What does PATFO stand for? Pop and the front office. It's not TFO AP. It's not front office and Pop. It is Pop and the front office. That's how we know it, right? I'm not going to sit here and believe that he doesn't have any say, and that suddenly that it's all. It's all Brian Wright who decides everything. It's all done by committee over there. It's got to be. Look at Christopher Leha. He's saying he's going back and forth with Tony. He's saying that's not good. Going to get you shit this season either. We're talking about 35 wins. Like, that's good. And Tony brought up the fact that you go back to 34 to 35 wins. That's where they were three years ago. So there's no improvement. And you got Wemby in the whole mix. Aye, man, Joe. What I do, Dillingham better not blow up, man. I hope he does. Dilly dilly. <laughs> dilly dilly. I remember we're all excited about Dillingham, man. Oh, dude. John Dyer and, and uh, Spurnan has lost their mind. Brandon, man. Big Papi Medina. They, they were in love. Five minutes later, he's like, dude. They were in love. Uh, NBA season uh, gets going next week. Spurs start next Wednesday. I'm looking at these seats, Joe. Uh -huh. I kind of want to go to Spurs games in Dallas and Houston. <clears throat> They're probably maybe, cheaper. Maybe not the games here this week, right? But find a game later on in the season. You can uh, get good seats, cheap, yeah. lower level. Dude, I got them for like 60 bucks a pop, and I yeah. was like eighth row at the Rockets game last year. Why is it so expensive here in, at the Frost? At the Frost, right? Sucks, so I, I, I went to the Toyota Center where the Rockets play, right? It's all right. It, it, dude, it's, I think Frost Bank Center is. Better than yeah the Toyota. That's what I'm saying. Which it's is high. weird. Which is weird because yeah. you go you go to you go you go to NRG Stadium. Oh, it's nice. Compare that to Alma Dome. I was like, oh my god, it's a nine day difference, right? Yeah. But you compare the Toyota Center to the out to the uh, the Frost. The Frost is probably is nicer. So it's like a barn. <laughs> the Toyota Center. It, it, it is like a barn, uh, dude. It was it was so funny. Uh, I went to Houston. I don't know a few months ago, and I met the developers of the Toyota Center. And as they were explaining how they created it, because they're talking to me about real estate and corporate real estate and all that stuff, they were like, we uh, have a walking, the walking ramps are only at two or three degree angles. Yeah. Do you know why that is, Michael? And I just looked at him and I said, elephants? And he looked at me shocked. Yeah. He was like, you're the only one I've ever met who's got that right. 
elephants. <laughs> the grade over there is so low because they use it for the circus so often. The circus goes over there, and they actually created the ramps in and out of the the, the building <laughs> for, the a, for the elephants. And it, it's like that. It's like that indoors over there. So it's kind of weird. There's no steep angles, but I like yeah. the Frost Bank Center better. Um, but there's a section there at the Rockets games. I think it's section 101. The entire section is Spurs fans. It's like going to an, uh, a college football game where they have like a section for the visiting team. They have that over there, man. It's actually very cool. David Outwater is saying CP3 will give us more wins because for 30 some odd games, we had Sohan at uh, point guard. So, uh, dude, I would be stoked if CP3 was out there playing a lot of minutes and a lot of time, but that's not his thing, dude. We, if we think that Devin Vassell is damaged goods, you should take a look at what goes on with CP3 these, these days. No, man. Here we CP3 go. misses 25 to 30 games each and every year. He gets to 55, 58, and he's done. Now, speaking of done, Joe, Kawhi Leonard. What happened? What happened, Kawhi? Out indefinitely with right knee inflammation. Is there any worse superstar out there in NBA history than Kawhi Leonard? And I'm stealing that line from Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith one time said that Kawhi Leonard is not only, he called him the worst superstar of all time because not only is he not available out there, the best ability out there is what? Availability? Availability. And he's always unavailable. Always unavailable. But on top of that, he does nothing to promote the Clippers. He did nothing to promote the Spurs. He didn't, uh, other than, than say indubitably, he does nothing to, to promote the Raptors back in the day. He's awful to the media. He uh, can't speak very well. Worst, po worst superstar of all time, Joe. But how surprised, how shocked are you, Joe, that Kawhi Leonard is out indefinitely? And what does indefinitely mean to you? Indefinitely means to me is that Kawhi probably wants out of uh, L.A. He doesn't like being there with the Clippers. He wants to go play with somebody else. He's going to force him to make a trade, I believe. He's just saying, oh, I'm rehabbing. My knee is swollen again. Mm -hmm. I got an injury. Well, you know what? That's not what they're paying you for. At right. some point in time, you, you got it. It was the Clippers. You got to move on from this. Well, dude. he doesn't tell them what's going on. He oh, didn't no. tell the Spurs what's going on. They put that on, you know, the Spurs medical staff, and it wasn't them. They owe the, the Spurs medical staff an, an apology, apology, man. Big time. ESPN going out there to say, hey, remember... He missed most of the end of the regular season last year, missed four of the six playoff games, and then withdrew from the, from the Olympics. Kawhi Leonard out indefinitely. This has got to be an issue here because it, it's the same thing, dude. It's the same thing. Look at Hanover Fist. The Moody Center is nicer than Frost. <laughs> uh, Moody is nice, but it's just not big. Yeah, it's small, but it's, it's, it's still not, nice. It's not an NBA facility. It's, it's, a, it's a college basketball facility. Uh, I'm, I, it's not an NBA facility at all. At all, it's nice. It's all right. That's a massive standing room only area, though. That is crazy out there. Matt Larimer saying Dilly had one decent game in the preseason. Everyone lost their minds. So unserious. Okay, what if it's not him? What if it's Dalton Connect? See the Spurs. Look at that with like Jeremy Sohan, right? Jeremy Sohan. Spurs fans like Sohan. Could have gotten Jalen Williams. You know, you always think about who you could have gotten. Spurs got Josh Primo. Could have gotten Alperen Shangun. And what I hate, Joe, Spurs fan goes, yeah, well, if we had done that, we wouldn't have gotten Wemby. So, yeah, rewarding confidence, right? <laughs> like they knew what was going to happen two years later. Trade Sohan, Tavarius. Trade Sohan and Keldon. Man, <laughs> Spurs fans are going to be very vocal this season if this team doesn't win at least, you know, 32, 35 games. If they're you know if they don't even meet the the Vegas odd makers projections, I think that we have to figure that out. I think we need to uh, test the, the the water temperature of Spurs fans right now, and go on Twitter. Right, what would be classified as a losing season? As a them? good season, yeah, or an un unacceptable season. Yeah, we'll figure that out. You know, uh, Spurs uh, the Spurs were out there getting rid of all of their uh, starters yesterday. They didn't sit them. They they sat them. Pops at them all. Look at Anthony Davis go off for 35 points yesterday. <laughs> you know what we're going to do right now? You know, do you know, do you know how many points Dalton Connect had yesterday, the rookie? How many? In preseason? He had 35 points. God. He, should, he was 8 for 13 from 3. And the Spurs could have had him. 
Spurs could have yeah. had him. He went number 17 in the draft. Dalton Connect. I mean, you know what? If low key betting rookie of the year, not 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 Zach Eady, dude. Give me Dalton Connect Zach for 25 Eady. to 1 odds. That's what I want to see. Yeah. So this is what we're gonna do again. Oh, we have a giveaway. We have giveaways, right? We have giveaway Fridays, is what we call them. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go ahead and do a giveaway again. It's, this giveaway is actually sponsored again by Spernandez and Chicano Fuerte. Fuerte nice. Productions. You got anything that you need for your business as far as photography, videography, give Chicano Fuerte of Fuerte Productions a, a call. But Spernandez has two silver and black scrimmage games for tomorrow's game. So if you haven't, you know, planned to go or you don't have tickets, well, here you go. We'll go ahead and give this away right now before we call Johnny Walker. And again, this is unbiased. Wherever it lands, it lands. But we're doing this because we're rewarding our most uh, faithful viewers here yeah. that have been watching us. And we're going to have another giveaway, too. So don't worry. We're, we're, we haven't forgotten about the boys that have been watching us all this week. We got something for you guys as well. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and do the spinning wheel. Let's see it. Tim Gonzalez. You want Tim? If you want to go to the Silver and Black scrimmage, we'll go ahead and be in contact with you. See if you want to go ahead and get your tickets. Very, very nice. But congratulations. Let's give some love to uh MCS General Contracting. They've been up with us since day one. Welcome to Sorry, another episode. My bad. I hit the button at the wrong time. <laughs> I meant to hit the change the scene button, not the, <laughs> the intro button. Here we go. You always hit that button, though. Because it's right next to the Alamo City button okay. when I'm trying to change the scene. All right. So let's go ahead and give some love to Jeff. Up to MCS. MCS. All right. Here you're, we go. You're wearing the gear. MCS General Contracting. More than 30 years of combined experience in concrete placement. They are the best in the business. Honest pricing. High quality work. They get going on house foundations, driveways, concrete patio decks. If you want to extend the deck, extend the driveway. If you're a business and you need to put together a slab, a parking lot, or other concrete placement services or sidewalks, reach out to MCS General Contracting at 210-774-9155. They're confident in their skills, so give Chris Leha over at MCS General Contracting a call at 210-774-9155. And thank you for being a sponsor of this show. You know, we're very proud to have MCS General Contracting with us because, you know, it is this small business that's really important, man. It drives the country, gets things going. We, I use them personally. Uh, earlier this summer, we had them come over to do a sidewalk at my house. Uh, they did a, a, a landing, some stairs to help get people down from our, our, uh, our slab, you know, from our, our, our covered patio. They did a fantastic job. Again, if you need a, a slab, if you need a, a swimming pool, basketball court, pickleball court, they can make it happen. MCS General Contracting, Chris Leha and his fellas, his brothers out there doing a fantastic job. Yeah, so we're going to try to get Johnny. I think he's busy right now, but we'll probably get him here in the next minute or so. Just wait for him to get back with me. Well, let's talk about uh, college football right now because college football, dude, I think this is the week that the Texas Longhorns punch their ticket into the playoffs. This has got to be the week, right? I mean, they've got a big game against Georgia. That's the game all, everyone's going to be watching. I mean, don't get me wrong, Alabama and Tennessee is also a good game. But Texas taking on Georgia, number five against number one. Five and one Georgia team coming in to DKR there in Austin. Do the cheapest seats right now, Joe? What are they? 351, not including fees. Damn. 351 bucks. Texas here by only four and a half points. Kind of a surprise, man. Because I think Texas is going to blow them out. I think I think this is a statement game. You saw Texas blow out uh, blow out Oklahoma. You saw them go to Ann Arbor and beat the living crap out of Michigan. Texas is the team to beat in college football right now. Ranked number one overall, have most of the first place votes. This is a statement weekend, Joe. And if you say that that you beat Oklahoma on a neutral site, Michigan on the road, and Georgia at home. Joe, I tell you what, that is it. They're in the playoff so? at that point. 7-0, and oh, I don't care if they lose the rest of the way. They're in the playoffs at that point. We're going to have Johnny Walker in a few minutes, hopefully, talking to us about it all. Yeah. But uh, lots of games going on this weekend as we go through the list of games this weekend. Uh, 
number two, Oregon. Somehow Oregon's number two. I mean, I know they beat Ohio State, but they're number two. They they have Purdue this weekend. Oklahoma State takes on BYU. These are games that take place tonight. Oregon and Purdue kick off at 7 o'clock on Fox. ESPN has Oklahoma State against BYU. The early game on ABC is Miami at Louisville. Miami 6-0, and ranked 6th in the nation. Taking on Louisville, Miami, man. They've won a couple of games where they pulled out of their ass. that They had no business winning, but they are still undefeated. A win is a win is a win, right, Joe? A win is a win. 10th ranked Clemson at 6-1. and 5-1, and one, rather, taking on Virginia in a big ACC matchup there. Uh, that's going to be taking place in South Carolina. Indiana hosts Nebraska. Indiana's ranked number 16. Missouri, number 19 in the nation. A lot of people think that this team should be in the playoff this year. Kind of a relatively easy schedule, if you will. Non-conference anyway. Taking on Auburn. Auburn having a down year, 0-3 in the, in the SEC. Missouri hoping to get back into the top 15 when it's all said and done. Army is ranked number 23, taking on East Carolina. Could we see Army in the playoff? Again, the best non-Power 5 team, or what is it, a Power 4 now, gets to go in. Bama, Tennessee, 7th ranked against 11th ranked. Bama favored by three, but we saw Bama get their asses handed to them by Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt celebrating up the streets of Broadway in Nashville after that win. They took that goalpost three miles and chunked it into the river. They can you imagine? Fined. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, hundred grand. Can you imagine Bama losing two games yeah. already, being two and two in the SEC? Notre Dame going to Atlanta to take on Georgia Tech. Notre Dame with a five and one record. The uh, Domers are favored by nine and a half. You have a Michigan-Illinois top 20 matchup going on. Michigan fair by three and a half against the Illini. Illini. Navy, do so Army's ranked. Navy is ranked two. Yeah. Five and oh, undefeated in the uh, UTSA's conference, the, the American conference. They host a, a, a 2-30 matchup against Charlotte. a and after being embarrassed in week one, and everyone was like, this quarterback sucks. They ain't going to do crap. Is now five and one. On the season, 3-0 and in the SEC after beating ninth, ninth ranked Missouri. They beat Arkansas. They've beaten Florida. The only loss they have is to Notre Dame, and Notre Dame is a top-17. So it'd be interesting to see what, what A&M can do in this game against Mississippi State. That's going to be on the road. 315 kickoff. A&M favored by 18 points. LSU on the road taking on Arkansas. LSU coming in 5-1, and undefeated in the SEC, ranked 8th of the nation. Taking on Arkansas, LSU fair by two and a half. We've mentioned Texas against Georgia. Texas fair by four and a half. Iowa State hosts UCF. Iowa State currently ranked number nine. K-State with a 5-1 record. Taking on West Virginia, favored by two and a half points. And then SMU, the Ponies, on the road against Stanford in an ACC matchup. First time they've ever played each other in the ACC. SMU ranked 21. Playoff bound. I think that if SMU wins out, they're going to be playoff bound when it's all said and done. Look at this, what we got here. We had a four ninety nine dollars super chat coming in from Shay Shay here. He wanted us to do the Grito. We already played the Grito uh, earlier in the show because uh, <laughs> of the Broncos beating the, the Saints. But he says, love the pod best in Texas. Appreciate you, Shay Appreciate Shay. it, man. Shay Shay. So we got Johnny going on. Okay, well, let, let, let's give some love to uh, Jeff Garcia from Lockdown Spurs and Ken's Five. We'll get to Johnny Walker on the flip side. MCS General Contract Locked on Spurs is your daily Spurs podcast hosted by Jeff Garcia, the lead Spurs writer for Ken's Five San Antonio. Jeff has a healthy plethora of guests all the time on the Locked on Spurs podcast. You can also follow Jeff on threads at Jeff G Ken's Five SA. You can also follow Jeff on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. So make sure you go ahead and give Jeff a follow not only on threads and Twitter, but also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash at Locked On Spurs. This is where you're going to be able to find the replay of the Locked On Spurs podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Jeff Garcia with us from day one. Again, that daily content. I subscribe on YouTube. I subscribe on Spotify. You should as well. Joe, how are we looking? Looking good. Johnny's almost here, man. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's talk about what Jeff Garcia has going on on Locked On Spurs. I am today's guest on Locked On Spurs, by the way. Uh, we're talking about uh, Jeremy Sohan's development, whether or not we're going to see a jump from him. Uh, what's going to happen this season down low with the Spurs? Can Wemby coexist with Sohan down low? Or is Sohan going to still have to stay outside on the perimeter? 
Locked On Spurs. Again, today's podcast is with me along with Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs. We do got Johnny ready to go here. Johnny. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to head go ahead and get his uh, really nice scene ready, which oh, is ready already. So we can go ahead and bring Johnny Walker on. And there he is. Let me go ahead and get rid of the spinning wheel here. Johnny Walker looking good, baby. <laughs> Well, what, what do they call that kind of suit again? That's a that's is that a double breasted suit? Is that what they call that? I they call know. it clean. They call it clean. That's what they that's, mean. That's <laughs> right, Johnny. Tell them, Johnny. Tell them. Hey, Casket sharp. That's what it's called. <laughs> now, Johnny, we were talking earlier about nightclubs back in the day when we were in oh, college. Man. Oh man. What were the nightclubs in San Antonio back in the day when you were hitting the club? I think the the one that I used to love to go to, and it was over by was that Central Park Mall. It was called the Hippodrome. That was the spot. That was the spot. Man. <laughs> I remember that, that was the day. Spot, man. <laughs> yeah, we had a good time in that place, man. <laughs> Dude, back in the day, Ingram Park Mall had its own bar in there, like a little lounge called yep. Uh, yep. Chelsea. Chelsea Street Pub. That mm-hmm. place was nice, man. I used to like going there, listening to live music, getting drunk mm-hmm. on beer. That was yeah. Then they, then they had Joe's Volcano across the street. Remember that one, too? Yeah, baby. I've, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've closed down Joe's Volcano. I have said I know they changed their name, but we also refer to it as the volcano, right? Like how yeah. Twitter, like Twitter changed its name to X. No, it's still Twitter, right? You know, you know, you know, kind of like uh, coming to America. You know, Mama call him Clay. I'm gonna call him Clay. Uh, it, th- that is what I see when it comes to uh, Joe's volcano. But Joe's volcano, yeah. I have said this before. If there's a nuclear bomb that goes off in San Antonio, only two things will survive: roaches and Joe's volcano. That place is still going to be bumping music every Sunday night from here oh until all God. end, man. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Joe's Volcano. Joe's, Joe's, Joe's. <laughs> meet, yeah, it was meet me at the volcano. Oh, man. <laughs> Mario Camasso is asking us the question, did you ever go to Club Image? I think I went to Image. I did go to Image. Yeah, I remember that one, too. Yeah, yeah. Good times, man. but then you you went to Austin, you yeah, Sixth Street, Fifth Street, and all that stuff going on over there. I used oh, yeah. to, I used to go to a club over there called the Aquarium, which the was aquarium. the Aquarium was like a dance club over there. My friends and I would go. Over there. I wonder if it was called the Aquarium. I don't know, I don't know what they if it still exists anymore. But 25, 30 years ago, it mm. was happening. It was happening. It was a convergence of UT and Texas State uh, uh, students coming together, right? Oh yeah, that, that, hey, that's what it we is. We do have some celebrity news that we can get to and get to later on in the yeah, show. Yeah, what you got? But we do got something incoming. There's been news, and thank you, uh, Hanover Fist, for letting us know. Breaking news about Jay Cutler. Oh yeah, Jay Cutler arrested. <laughs> We're gonna show the mug shot of him, dude. Damn, brother. <laughs> what did he get arrested for? What did he get Cutler, arrested for? Busted for DUI and, and gun, gun possession, possession after a car oh, wow. accident in Tennessee. Wow. This happened. Yeah, this wow. happened in Tennessee. Uh, it was in it was in Franklin, Tennessee, which by the way was where I vacationed this past summer. Yeah. Franklin, mm-hmm. Tennessee is beautiful. That's where you all the, the celebrities picture? live. Yeah, his picture. Uh, the mugshot. Oh my God, that's a great mugshot. <laughs> that is that. a fantastic you know, mugshot. This one and RC Buford's mugshot. <laughs> oh, they're going toe to toe, man. <laughs> Who can forget? I remember everything, dude. I remember seeing one time I went to the game, right? Yeah. Spurs game. Some fan was walking around with a T-shirt. R.C. Buford's mugshot on it, dude. Can you yeah. imagine that? That's funny. That's classic. That's, <laughs> classic. That's awesome. That's classic. <laughs> so, uh, homeboy Jay Cutler, who was uh, one time uh, married to Kristen Cavallari, um, was uh, posted bond to $5,000. Again, he was arrested. Uh, according to law enforcement, he rear-ended another vehicle. When officers arrived, they smelled booze. They said he was slurring his words, had bloodshot eyes. He refused to take a field sobriety test. Cops took him to the hospital for a blood sample. Blood alcohol level has not been released, but they did say that he had two firearms in the vehicle, included a loaded pistol. Jay mm. Cutler spent the night in the pokey. Why do you need all them guns, though, man? What's he doing? He owes somebody money, man? <laughs> they trying to shake him down, Johnny? What's going on with that? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. What are talking about? In Texas, that's just normal. I yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he owes somebody money, Johnny. That's what that is. You know, we're that, from the was, hood, yeah, man. That, that sounds like it, man. He's running from something, man. <laughs> All yeah. Right. All right. So this weekend, we've got the fifth ranked Georgia Bulldogs going to DKR in Austin, take on the top ranked Texas Longhorns. I said early in the show 
that it doesn't matter what happens from here on out. If UT wins this game, they're in the playoff. You can't exclude this team. I think they can lose the next four games to make the playoff because you can't exclude no. a team that went into Ann Arbor and beat the crap out of the national champion Michigan Wolverines that went onto a neutral field and beat the crap out of the Sooners. Now mm. take it on Georgia in Austin. This is it, right? This is this is like punching the ticket in, in my eyes anyway. What do you think? Uh, you know what? That that would definitely be something that that you would think could happen. But you know what? You you never know what's what's happening with these rankings. And and I know that there's a lot of teams that were expecting to p- play better and to do well, but they're they're just not showing up. So uh, you know, there's a lot of things that I think play into some of the rankings too that that we're not privy to. But um, it, it's it's surprising with the way some of these big teams are going down. Uh, earlier or uh, midway through the season. Now, Oregon somehow got first place votes. I know they beat Ohio State, right? Yeah. But come on, man. How is UT not unanimously the number one team in the nation? That I don't understand. Well, I'm a, the only reason I'll say that is because the score should have been like 56 to three. So if they would have whooped them like they should have whooped them, because I think they took it easy on him. And I and I'd be honest with you, Quinn Ewers was not on his game. I that was probably one of the worst games that I've seen Quinn play. He just you could you could tell the game was just fast, was really fast for him. And it was taking some time for him to get it together. He didn't start getting it together till the second half. And I'll be honest, the crowd that I was with, man, we were yelling for Archie to come in, man. I mean, I, 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 Come on, man. What are you doing, man? I mean, he was missing guys wide open. I mean, I think everybody knows that the score should have been a lot worse than what it was. Um, I, I think you got to give a lot of respect for, for Coach Sarkeesian for not making the move, uh, even though there was a lot of people uh, that wanted him to make that move. But I'm glad that he didn't in the sense that we're not going to have a quarterback controversy. And I think he stuck by his guns. And I think that was probably the best thing that happened out of that game was for him to go ahead and stick with Quinn, not to bring in Archie Manning and and have and have everybody talking about who should be the quarterback at UT. Talking to Johnny Walker, former Texas Longhorn great, former Holmes Husky great, member of the yeah, Texas sure. High School Football Hall of Fame. Uh, we talk to you about the Longhorns all the time. Uh, mm-hmm. this is something here where the, the Longhorns, I'm surprised they're only favored by like five points. I'm thinking that they should be favored by at least a touchdown. You are very good at predicting the scores. I mean, you are like beyond accurate. The only time you've ever been wrong was when my crap Saints team beat the crap out of the no, Cowboys. No. I was wrong last week about the Cowboys. I thought that they were going to play a better game, and they embarrassed me. So I'm almost like, I don't even want to pick for them okay. anymore. Well, well, fortunately, with them. fortunately, they're off this week, so you can't be wrong. Yeah. Well, <laughs> four and a half point favorite. Over-under is 56 and a half, which means that they expect there to be a big game, like a 30 to 26 score. That's what mm-hmm. Vegas is predicting. What is Johnny Walker predicting Texas against Georgia? I got to get Johnny on speed dial. He can be this my is, book. This, man. Is, this is a tough one, man. This, <laughs> This is a this is a tough one. I, I I will say that the thing that has surprised me the most about Texas, the Texas football team, is their defense, man. I did not think, and I was surprised at just how well their defense is playing. I mean, they really put a whooping on, on the Sooners. I mean, it, it and, and Michigan as well. I mean, they they've gone up against some big teams and they just shut them down. Um I know, I know Georgia scored 41 against Mississippi State. When we played Mississippi State, we only scored what 34 against them. Right. This is a tough, this is a tough game. You know, Carson Beck seems like he's getting his stuff together. I think he was what 36 for 48 for 459 yards against Mississippi State. This is a tough one to predict. I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I I want to say that this game, man, it's a tough one. I, I would say 24. Well, I'm gonna say 24. To 13. 24-13, Texas, Texas pulls this one out. Uh, they're going to be, they'll be over for sure. But um, a, a lot depends on Quinn Ewers and his start. He's got to get a good start. If he's got a good start, then we got a good chance of making this making this be uh, a laughable. But uh, it, it depends on his play. He's going to have to really step up his game and not have a slow start like he did against Oklahoma. I think the size might be a thing, man. I, I think that the, the Longhorns might just be bigger than the the Bulldogs. I just think that they might bully them around. You have the home field advantage going on. Uh, you know, the, for for all that's gone on with the with the Longhorns, from losing Quinn Ewers to an injury, mm-hmm. to seeing Arch Manning be the truth, to mm-hmm. going back to Quinn, all Texas does is win games, and they all do. all Texas does is put up points. 
the lowest of point total that they've given up this, that they that they've scored this year is 31 and that's mm-hmm. when they went to Ann Arbor but mm-hmm. look at the number of points they've given up zero to Colorado State 12 to Michigan seven to UTSA three to ULM 13 to Mississippi State and only three to OU the mm-hmm. most they've given up is 13 points yep. that is remarkable that is 19 mm-hmm. 38 that's 38 points in six games yeah. remarkable. that's amazing yeah. I, I think their defense has has over over overshone. I, I they just I, I didn't think their defense was going to be that good. Now the only thing that scares me about Georgia, Georgia does have a passing team. They have been, they played very well against running teams, predominantly running teams that they played against. They pretty much shut down the run. They right. they've done a great job against the run. The thing that scares me about Georgia is they can throw the football. Carson Beck's a very good quarterback. They do have some receivers to get the ball to. And let's be fair, you know Oklahoma was down to their sixth, seventh, and eighth string wide receivers, so they didn't have much of a passing game, uh, which I thought was crazy. How, I don't see how one through five was injured uh, at Oklahoma. Their top five receivers were, were, were not able to play. So Georgia's got a, they got a passing team. So this is going to be Texas's first big test against more of a true passing football team, and we'll be able to see what the defense will be able to do against, against that type of offensive, offensive set. Talking to Johnny Walker. Uh, Joe had asked the question yesterday. We debated this for a little while. The better mascot, uh, <laughs> Uga or Bevo? Who, who you hey, got? I don't know. I don't know if you saw when uh, the last time Texas played Georgia in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, in the did. Sugar Bowl, yeah. And uh, I think Bevo set the tone. He, he, let, <laughs> he let everybody know who the true mascot is when he went after the little the little bulldog. And uh, you know, he, he Bevo went after him. They they had to get the little bulldog off the field, man. He he was scared. So uh, I think you know Bevo by far. It's got that one one hands down. I like Bevo. Bevo got some of that gangster in him, Johnny. You, <laughs> you, know, you, you going to bring this dog man. over here? You going to F around and find out? Bevo, man. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I was like, that's yeah, my man. mascot right there. That's, Bevo. That's, it, man. that's my quarterback. <laughs> nah, yeah. nah, nah, not right now. Not right now. <laughs> not right now. That's too early to bring up that cowboy talk, man. Well, let's talk <laughs> no, about the yeah, Cowboys. Yeah. Dallas Cowboys have the week <laughs> off. Uh, they yeah, got yeah. obliterated by the Lions in the last game. No. Yeah. Give it up yeah, 119 yeah. points in three home yeah. games. 3-0 and at home. Yeah. I'm on the road. 3-0 oh, and 3 at home. That's mm-hmm. when you take the sticker off the car, Johnny. You know? Yeah, pretty yeah. much, man. They don't yeah, even want to know. Don't don't let them yeah. know you're a Cowboy fan that day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, that's, that's tough one. so let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. Couple couple things. Why do you think the Cowboys lost so badly to the Lions? Like, like is it is it just lack of talent? Is it bad mm-hmm. coaching? What is the 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 biggest thing that's holding this 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 Cowboy team back? I think I think against Detroit, I, I think Detroit had something to prove um, because they basically took the football game from them the last time they played, and I believe they played they played in Dallas. Um, they basically took that game away from them. Um, they, 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 when the offensive lineman checked in and then and, and threw a touchdown to him, and they said, no, he didn't check in. And they actually went back to that play against Dallas to show you <laughs> what kind of respect they had. Um, I, I just think Detroit it was just on a mission, man. I, I think that they, they were upset about what happened to them the last time they played Dallas, and they, they left it out on the football field, man. I mean, they wanted it. I mean, you could tell from the, from the opening kickoff, they were ready to go. And, and Dallas uh, just – could not keep up with or nor, nor play at the level that Detroit was playing. Detroit wanted that game and they wanted to prove a point. And I'll be, they damn sure did it. They, they whooped Dallas's butt top to bottom. Johnny, we saw Jerry Jones go out and make an ass out of himself earlier this week. Uh, no, he got, he Jerry, got, did you see what happened? Jerry made an ass of himself. When he, when he, <laughs> did you see what happened when he questioned the, uh, when he got questioned by the, um, yeah. The the uh, the one hundred five three the fan there in Dallas, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they were holding his feet to the fire, saying, "What's going on?" And Jerry basically said, "I can get you guys replaced. No, I don't need to answer your questions. I can get you guys fired." What were your thoughts when you heard Jerry say something like that? Uh, is that something that is just kind of like, "Oh, that's just Jerry being Jerry," uh, or is that something that is something that's that's that signifies something deeper? That uh, that lets me know that Jerry is a true gangster, and he actually can have every one of them replaced. <laughs> yeah. He could have the station shut down. He could give it a whole new name. No, he could do that. He was real. I think he wanted to let them know, hey, don't forget who you're talking to now. 
I, I, I own Dallas. So don't don't forget who you're talking to. Now, I, I I can answer your questions if you want me to. But let's just know that I'm I'm the real G here. <laughs> I'm the one who can control everything, man. So watch what you say. I know wrong with that. I don't have a problem. What did with Jerry that tell him, Johnny? Watch your mouth. Yeah, let him know. That, man, that, hey, I own you, man. <laughs> you, 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 heard it, you heard it here first. Johnny Walker's four <laughs> state state sponsored media there. Right. Yeah, I, I'm the man. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny says this. Uh, this commercial or this endorsement is is approved by Johnny Walker. By Johnny Walker. <laughs> yeah, I own you. So watch what you say. No, um, you you hate to hear that. Um, um, even though it's true, one hundred percent true. Um, you you would you would you would think that Jerry probably would have had a little bit more class, but I think he's still upset at the embarrassing loss because it was embarrassing, especially losing that way at home. But uh, hey, man, it is what it is. I mean, you you got sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. Sometimes you get your butt kicked, so you got to take it like a man. You got to take the L's with the wins, and 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 I don't think he was ready to do it at that time. <laughs> so he let everybody know. I think the problem is is that the blame is going to him. He likes to deflect to Dak and say, "Well, we we need to have better quarterback play. We need to have this, that, and the other." And everyone's like, "No, no, 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 no. This is you. You're the problem." And I think that 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 Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones wants all the credit, but he doesn't want any of the criticism. And that's just the problem that he has. And uh, I just think that it was classless. It was tacky. And I'm glad the, the national media went after him. I'm glad that Joe, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, my God, what is he doing? Yeah. Can't but, do Mike, what did, but Mike, what, what, who cares? What are you going to do? Are you, are you going to go? All right, what are you going to do to Jerry? What, what are you going to do to him? Well, what you can really? do, what you can do to Jerry is have apathy. What you can do to Jerry is not give a damn. What you can do is not watch the games. And, no, and, but and I, he owns a team. He's, he owns Dallas. It is not just the team. He owns Dallas. I mean, what, what are you going to do to him? I mean, there's nothing that you can do. He's going to say what he wants to say. What you do is you just don't have him on your radio show anymore. That's all thing you can do. That's it. Because <laughs> he's going to be able to say whatever he wants to say. It doesn't matter. So you got to know that Jerry, that's the mindset he has. That's how he's going to come across. And that's not, this is not the only time he's done this. He's done this before. It's nothing new. It shouldn't surprise anyone at all. I don't know why anyone was surprised by the comment that he made. Talking to Johnny Walker about the NFL week ahead. Uh, something happened, man. The, it's finally starting to click for the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans, uh, you know, th th this is a, a, a hallmark of a good team. When yeah. you win the games where you play like a D or a C plus performance, right? You mm -hmm. you play you play a bad you play poorly you still win. They finally put it together, beat New England and beat the brakes off of them. Houston Texans only one loss on the season this week. Uh, back at it this week. What what are your thoughts on the Texans as they go into Green Bay? Green Bay at four and two. Jordan Love is back. They're getting it back together, but the Texans mm -hmm. have Joe Mixon back in the lineup. They're, they're, they're more balanced of an attack. Who do you got this weekend between the Texans and Packers? Packers favored by two and a half, according to Vegas. Um, I, I am a Houston Texans fan. I, I love C.J. Stroud. I like what Demico Ryan's have done with that football team. I have I have the Texans going to the Super Bowl. And, and by all, I, I don't see why they wouldn't win it. I mean, I, I really am. I am really, I have a lot of respect for, for the way that they've handled uh, the, the Texans, I like I like what they've done. I like the changes that they've made. I like the players that they brought in, and they just play at a, at, at a high level, man. I really do. I, I really think that they are on 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 the cusp of being one of the top football teams uh, in the NFL for a long time coming. I, I really do. I, I think they're very good, and there's no reason why they shouldn't be playing in the Super Bowl this year. Well, other Super Bowl contenders this time on the NFC: Lions and Vikings play each other this weekend. Vikings, one of two teams in the NFL right now, undefeated at five and zero, hosting a Lions team that's four and one, coming off a blowout win at Jerry World. Mm -hmm. Do we got to take the Vikings seriously if they win this game? I mean, if they go six and zero, we've got to take them seriously because mm -hmm. I don't know anybody who looks at that Vikings team with Sam Darnold as quarterback and thinks to themselves, "That's the favorite to win the NFC." But if they go out and they beat up on the Lions, is this the game that is this a statement game for them? It's definitely a statement game, but I don't think anybody thought Sam Darnold would was going to play at the level that he's playing. Um, and, and I and I say he's already got my vote for what comeback player of the year. I mean, this yeah. what he's done this season is is just been phenomenal. But 
I think there's there's a lot of there's a lot of respect we're giving to Sam, but also their defense. I think I think Coach Florida as a DC has got them playing at a high level. I mean, they just they're, they're just clicking all, all cylinders now. I think the only thing that can hurt Minnesota right now with the momentum that they've got going is is is, is any major injuries. As long as they can stay away from any major injuries, I, I don't see any reason why uh, Minnesota can't compete uh, in, in the playoffs and, and maybe get in the NFC Championship. They, they're playing that well. Talk about the Vikings defense. They've given up the second fewest points in the season. Only the uh, L.A. Chargers somehow, some way, have, have uh, given up fewer points. It's 66, man. They've only got up 76 points in five games. That's remarkable, man. That's remarkable. Joe, what you got, man? So one of the things I wanted to get into with uh, Johnny here is let's talk mm-hmm. a little bit about UTSA football, man. UTSA. Okay. They still play? They haven't been. They haven't <laughs> fared very well this season, you know, and this is what happens with life after Harris. You know, they got to kind of form <laughs> their own identity. And, you know, and this mm-hmm. team is kind of going through it right now. You feel bad for. For Coach mm-hmm. Trailer, because he is trying to go out there and compete, you know, but yeah. this team is kind of in flux, trying to figure things out right now. So I think UTSA fans need to be a little patient with this new team because this is a brand new team. But given that, you know, this team is about right at 500 right now. Magic number to get mm-hmm. him to be a bowl eligible team is going to be six wins. Right, well, right well, now, well. UTSA, they still got, you know, some games that they, they got to win be, in order to be bowl eligible. They got about, I think, about five, six games left on the season here. Next game that they have is coming up. It's going to be against FL Atlantic tomorrow at 2.30. UTSA needs to win this game. I mean, these are some of these teams that they have that they're going up against. You know, I look at Army. I look at Temple. You know, even that Memphis game, you know, UTSA is not going to have like a real easy schedule because any one of these teams can beat you. You got to play at a high level to win. What do you think about this UTSA football team? Do you think they have in it? Did you think they have it in them to win three games to be bowl eligible? I, I definitely do. Um, but I, I just I'll just say this. I think it's hard to replace an eight year veteran in Harris. That's weird. Um, eight year veteran in college. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you know, you're going to go through some going pains. I, I think how long has he been? Uh, was he the quarterback there with about 10 years, 15 years? Yeah, no, yeah. but. No, you know, you had you had uh, an incredible quarterback who who I think everybody realized in just how great he was. I mean, he the, 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 what what he was able to do at UTSA and and be able to 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 have the team play up to to his standard. Um, you see that they're struggling. I think one of the things that they're going to have to do, and, and you're going to have a down year. This is, we'll just count this as a rebuilding yeah. year. They're going to have to bring in. And they're going to have to go on the transfer portal and they're going to have to go get a quarterback. They're just going to have to take the time and spend the money and get them a big time quarterback. And I think UTSA, UTSA will be back back where they need to be. Um, uh, the quarterback play hasn't been very well and they've kind of struggled. And unfortunately, you know, as their quarterback goes, so so has gone their season. So that that's going to be what they're going to need to do to be able to get back to where they need to be. Now, they're going to still battle, though. You know, Coach Taylor is a trooper. He, they're going to battle. But I, I don't see any reason why they can't get that sixth win and, and be bowl eligible by the by the end of the season. They got to get that NIL money up, man. You yeah, probably man. talk about getting a quarterback. You get it, man. Show you me the money. Show me, I, I, show I, me I, the money. That's why I said you got to go buy one, man. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to. You know what I'm <laughs> you know? You're gonna shake down the students. <laughs> yeah, you might. You might have to. You know, I, you, you you say that, but I think one of the schools when I read, I, I I'm trying. I want to say it was Maryland. But they're charging a ten percent entertainment fee. Wow! They're, uh, on on every uh, on every price of the ticket. So for you to get tickets, you got to pay an extra ten percent for entertainment fee, so that they can go out and continue to buy the players that they need to continue to be successful. So don't be surprised if UTSA has <laughs> has an entertainment fee next year when you start <laughs> buying season tickets. Because you know Ooh. we got to go get them. They got to go get them a quarterback, man. They on top it. of Ticketmaster. On top of Ticketmaster hey. fees, 10%. Yeah, 10%. Yeah, 10, 10%, 10% entertainment fee. I, I, I saw that. I was I, I was shocked, but then I wasn't shocked because that's the name of the game now, man. If you if you got the money to play play the game, then you're going to be able to continue to bring in the big players, and, and you got to be able to have the money. And and I know that they're dealing to be working on trying to to bring their NL, NIL up, money up. Um, it, it's, just, it's just a work in progress. They're getting there. They're working on it, but they're definitely going to have to do something to bring in a, a top-notch quarterback for next year. Now, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this about uh, going back to UT. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking about it. Okay. 
Wouldn't huh? it be great if UT and AM won out and they Man. battled each other the last week of the season? I'll Ooh. be honest with you. I, I saw AM last week, man. It, they look like the AM of old. Really? Uh, they new man. They look good. I mean, they look good. They had no problems. I mean, they they really look good. I I I think they've turned the corner. Um, I I, I did not think that Coach Echo, I, was it Echo or yeah, whatever? Yeah. I did I did not think that he was going to be yeah. able to turn them around this quick. But he has done a phenomenal job at AM and they looked really good. I would not be surprised if both both teams went out. And it's going to be a big time game when they play at the end of the season. I, I really do. That they, they are really playing well too. We got a question for you, Johnny, coming in from the chat from Sam Salinas here, one mm -hmm. of our most faithful uh, viewers here. Mm -hmm. He's saying, "Does Johnny Walker think Owen McCown is not the guy to lead?" Yeah, UTSA. No, 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 he's not. No, no, no. I, I hate to say that, and and you, you never want to talk bad about a player. And I, and I don't think he's a bad quarterback. I just don't think that he can play at the level that they need him to play for them to be to be as successful as they've been. I mean, I, again, you, you, we've seen how great Frank was. I mean, Frank Harris was just an incredible quarterback. I, I think he probably was underrated in, in, in a lot of ways. But, man, he he just he was able to put UTSA on his back and, 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 and just play at a level that kept them uh, in contention every year. I mean, they, he just he, he was a heck of a quarterback. And it's hard to replace somebody like that. And now you're seeing the difference – uh, that that he's made, and, and the importance it is for them to be able to bring in a quarterback of that caliber. That is Johnny Walker bringing his expertise to the Alamo City Sportscast. We we talked about the fact that um, he believes that Texas is going to win this game, but it's going to be a low scoring affair. He believes uh, he's confident that the Cowboys will not lose on Sunday because they're not playing at all. <laughs> he's got the Texans this weekend, and who you got to get between the Lions and the Vikings? Uh, that's a good one. Um, I'm going to go with Detroit, man. Detroit showed me something against Dallas. If they can come in with that same passion and that same fire, they're going to be a tough team to beat in the NFC. Yeah, they, they look really good. I, I think Minnesota is going to get upset. They're going to get their first loss going against Detroit this week. Very nice. That's Johnny Walker. Again, Texas Longhorn, great. Former Holmes Husky legend. Current mm -hmm. Husky legend forever. That never dies, baby. Legends never die. Never die. Never die. That, that is Johnny Walker. Thanks for being with us again, and and we hope to have you next next Friday as well. Yeah, thanks, yes, Johnny. my man. I'm there, man. Hey, hey, Longhorns. There, <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Johnny. Appreciate you, man. All right, my man. Take care. He's got Bye -bye. he's got Bebo over Uga as well. <laughs> Drew show saying people forget that Pop probably got Jay Howard fired. I remember that. Definitely got Walter Pasquita, Jeff Bexler, the producer Eric Gray fired over the Iverson bit. That's how Mike Taylor got hired. God, that is. Ooh, yeah, I remember that drama back, back in, in the, the day. day. I remember that back in the day. But you know what? Didn't Jimmy Johnson say winners get to get to do whatever they want to do? Yeah. Pop ain't a winner. It's been five years, baby. He ain't a winner. Man, you need to get some new material, man. This, this you know Coach what? Pop nonsense, dude. We've got to move on from it. Dude, man. what's going to go on, dude? They win 30 games again this year? Jesus, man. Anyway. Everyone have a fantastic weekend. Again, if you have any financial needs when it comes to investments or insurances, 210-508-0369. That's for me, 210-508-0369. I got to head back to the office. Joe, have a fantastic weekend. Go Longhorns. Go Texans. Go Lions. No, God, no. We'll be back on Monday. Y'all take right. care.